welcome back. I've got Rachel Gogos on the line. Rachel, how are you? I am doing great. How are you, Michael? I am awesome. I've been looking forward to this conversation for a while, so I'm looking to dive into the work you do and jump into the conversation. Absolutely. Let's do it. All right. So share a little bit about you. So I am a the founder and owner of a brand agency. We, for the last decade, or so have specialized in personal branding. Uh, we also work with a lot of business brands and we do a lot of the tactical things behind the scenes that help one build their online presence. Um, I came to starting this agency through a very um, winding path in my life that included stints in, in government and nonprofit organizations like the United Nations and also in journalism at the Wall Street Journal. So I'm um, feel blessed to be able to use all my skills and uh and what I do today. I've heard of those organizations. <laughs> uh, um I am a subscriber to one of them anyway. I I don't know if uh, the UN has any type of public I'm sure they do. Yeah, Some they type have a of lot. Yeah, of course they they have a, a a pretty good vantage point of what's going on in the world. So mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, and the, and the Wall Street Journal of course, we know, we know what they do. Uh mm -hmm. but it's it's important. I always love talking with people because no one has a direct path to what they mm -hmm. are doing now. Everything was from twists and turns and opportunities and choices, sometimes moving forward, sometimes maybe taking a step or two back. And it's one of those things, and even in my career, uh, what I've done over my life, I, I look at the tools that I picked up along the way, and some of them were when I worked in accounting, some of them were in IT, some of them nonprofit, mm -hmm. some of them consulting, some of them doing audits. You know, when my original career as a public accountant, auditing all kinds of different organizations, mm -hmm. which I never thought would be beneficial to me in the work that I do today, but it is because yeah. you know, when you speak with organizations, regarding workplace culture or burnout prevention or whatever the case might be, I have at least somewhat of an understanding of the nuances of what that organization, as far as the type of organization it is, might be running into. And when I bring it up sometimes in conversations, people look at it and I say, did you ever work in this field before? Mm -hmm. No. Well, how do you know that? Well, I'm an auditor. I originally was an auditor. So you ask questions. You you yeah. want to understand how organizations work. And I think one of the things when it comes down to personal branding and mm -hmm. and building your presence online and even offline. Um, and yes, the world, there is an offline world. Yes. I know <laughs> for many of us, we forget that, but it, it's there's still out there. But I think and I run into this a lot, and I'm sure you do too, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on this, is when it comes to boasting about Mm -hmm. what we do or who we are, or what we do, we struggle. Now we can explain, you know, like I just did a few minutes ago about, okay, th this type of organization has these aspects to it, all these parameters. And I can articulate it that, you know, without a problem. But then you ask me, okay, what do I do? We, we kind of get that, you know, second grade stage fright kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. uh, love to hear your thoughts on that. Mm -hmm. So uh, I've, I think the question, you know, what do you do? Often really for people, they answer why they do what they do versus the what they do. You know, I mean, I think the immediate reaction is I'm a pharmaceutical rep or whatever the thing is. But I think the more important answer actually is the is the why somebody does what they do, because then you really start to get to the heart of a person and the soul of a person. And it's a much more memorable conversation. That's one thing. The other the other part I want to address here is this boasting piece, right? And, and many times when I talk to people about personal branding, they immediately go to that thought, right? Oh, I don't not comfortable boasting about myself or bragging about myself or whatever that might be. And that's actually not what personal branding is. You know, so I, I'd love to share that personal branding is really about you know, we all come to to different relationships with a reputation already in hand, right? So part of a personal brand is our existing reputation, which if someone doesn't know someone, right, they can easily Google them and, and get a sense of somebody's reputation very quickly nowadays. And the other part of personal branding is the personality, you know, like the real essence of the person, what makes them tick, what's, what are their values, what are their, um, 
what is their mission in life? What is their drive in life? What are the things they're really convicted about, you know, really passionate about? Those are all elements of a personal brand. So if you think about it, if you start to share some of those things, it's not really boasting. It's just kind of dropping the kimono a little bit, you know, and letting people in and just letting people know who you are. Um, I think, think it can be a little bit awkward doing that online because sometimes you feel like you're talking into a black hole, but there's certain ways one can write content so it doesn't sound like that, right? And try to also increase engagement and conversation and, and posts as you're informing people a little bit more about yourself or educating them on the, you know, the work that you do in a way that can be helpful to people too. Like articles that I write or keynotes or posts, anything like mm -hmm. that. Uh, I what I tend to do um, when I can, and I'm thinking about it, is you know, as if I'm having a conversation with somebody. And you, of course, there's writing styles, and you can make it conversational, or you can right. you know, follow you know guidelines and all that. Because uh, ironically, I found out the other day uh, my sixth grade teacher, Mrs. Nicholas, who was just as stern as they came mm -hmm. with, uh, you know, English and proper mm -hmm. things and all that stuff. And uh, even to the point in my writing, I use an app called Grammarly, which a lot of oh, people yeah. probably mm -hmm. use. So I, my nickname for that app is Mrs. Nicholas. And I, you know, one day I thought, you know what, I, you know, I wonder, you know, you know, when she may have, you know, passed away or anything. You know, so that was sixth grade. That was not yesterday. Right. So, you know, I thought, okay, when did she pass away? She hasn't. Oh, and amazing. I, I'm like, one, that's awesome. Two, it's like, uh, it's like, yeah, she would be, I think she would be quite pleased and not surprised in the work that I'm doing. Yes. I'm, there's days I'm still shocked at that I do, what I do. Uh -huh. Like, wow. But I, I can connect the dots. I can see how I'm doing yes. what I'm doing, but there are days where I have to kind of pause for a moment and go, all right, why is this such an awesome experience now? Because mm -hmm. I, again, never would have done it before. And I think mm -hmm. the storytelling of branding mm -hmm. is, is important because people connect to stories. That's why people love watching television shows or going to the movies or watching movies. I mean, they, everybody paying for the 400 streaming services that we all have now. Yeah. It, people love stories. So when you are talking about what you do mm -hmm. there's if you can somehow bring those people in like you mentioned mm -hmm. and share the story of why you do what you do mm -hmm. you know, yes okay compensation money we okay we all get that but right. there's a reason for why you do that there's something that resonates within you that you chose this path instead of doing something completely different and i think the more people that do that the 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 more connected people start feeling and the whole no like and trust factor comes yes. into play because you can look at you know a website or you can read a bio and mm -hmm. you can go wow it's as if i know this person mm -hmm. and if you have that then you're like okay let's let's proceed further yeah and, and and work with them on something if if that's what you're looking for yeah no you hit the nail on the head when you said connecting the dots right that's so important to put particularly on an about page or you know on your linkedin profile as well because if if we just put a list of every place we've worked kind of like a resume we're not actually connecting the dots of how it's relevant to what we're doing today so the more we can do that and again you know weave in part of the story which is what people remember and weave in those interesting points that are um, differentiators for you, whether personal or professional. Again, like those little things are memorable, but there also could be great connection points to someone who is looking for an accountant, let's say. Um, but you also mentioned that you love to bake bread, right? Someone else might have that passion. It's certainly going to stand out because you don't really think about that when you're looking for a numbers guy, right, to help you with your business. So it's as you un unravel the story, unveil the story and connect the dots, just make sure, you know, that you're also keeping a little bit of those personal elements in that also communicate your reputation and communicate your um, your passions, right, in a way that make people say, hmm, you know, I want to know a little bit more about this person. They sound intriguing to me and clearly there's more to them. So, um, the, you know, the more you can convey that online, I think the better. And I think video too, you know, just to kind of 
take a, a little tangent to that, besides podcasting and putting audio content out there, even short video snippets, again, because it's a, like a fully dimensional connection, right? Versus somebody just reading static words. And it's always amazing to me what people resonate with and something that they they read about another person online or see about another, right? Within a video or something to that. So the more you can just you know, show up naturally and who you are. And the more you can, again, like help people connect the dots, because you also have about three seconds online to grab somebody's attention. The more you can do that right off the bat and make it easy for them to consume your content, the much more likely I think they are to, you know, to reach out to further the connection. Yeah, they get to know you as you said, a, a person. And yes, and, and it's one of those things that I, the organization that published a few of my books, one of the mm -hmm. things that they were hammering home was, you know, confusion repels and clarity attracts. So mm -hmm. it, it's, and they were, their theme was basically on, okay, when you're posting things online, you know, mm -hmm. if you're a business and you're promoting your business, you want it to be, you know, business. So you're not confusing people, but I, I, I have to challenge that now because I think people feel more connected. That's why you see, you know, the famous people, you know, quote unquote, famous mm -hmm. people, you know, musicians and athletes and actors and, you know, dignitaries and all of that when they're on social media and they have such a huge following is because there's a desire for mm -hmm. people that want to know more. Like we can pick on Taylor Swift for a minute. Mm -hmm. Yes video snippets of her performing or things like that, but it could be something where she's, you know, at a football game or she's doing something in the community or anything mm -hmm. like that. It gives a bigger insight because people want to connect with people. That's our natural instinct yes. is to mm -hmm. connect. And, you know, during the pandemic that, you know, really hit a lot of people because mm -hmm. we were forced not to necessarily physically or get close to people. And it was, you know, I know a lot of people are still, dealing with that and the mm -hmm. aftermath of that. And it's, it's going to be an interesting dynamic to watch over the next few decades to see what comes of that. You know, yeah. Of course, thankfully, you know, with therapies and a variety of other things, there are ways to navigate around or through things. And my mm -hmm. hope is if people are still struggling with those types of things that they, they seek some guidance and help on it because it, it's available. Thankfully. Yeah. Uh, but at the end of the day, I think we all, we have this connection. We want to connect with others. We don't want to right. feel alone uh, as an entrepreneur or a small business owner or mm -hmm. a dentist. We, we joked about this in the pre-show. Okay, everybody pause for a minute and go brush your teeth. Okay, mm -hmm. there. I put it in. Um, uh, shout out to my dentist family here. Uh, but it, what we got to do, I think, when it comes to our branding and our website and our business is, yes, we have a product or service that we're marketing. Right. We get it. But the more human you can be, I think the more connected you will be and the customers that you get are going to be better customers for you because Absolutely. they're longing for that type of engagement. They they don't want just a transaction. They no. want an experience. That's why when I go to a restaurant, I prefer local ran and owned restaurants than chains. Nothing against the chains, but right. I, knowing the people and you know, if you go there frequently enough, they get to know you. And then for some reason, like there's this one restaurant that my wife and I go to occasionally. And uh, one of the waitresses there, she is on my backside every time we come in. She's mm -hmm. like, you're not getting a menu today. And I'm like, what? <laughs> what are you doing? And she picks on me like, no, tomorrow. But, you know, of course, my spouse loves that amazingly. Mm -hmm. I, I roll with it. And it's kind of fun. But you wouldn't necessarily get that if you just went into a chain restaurant even if you go there a lot it, it's different yeah. uh, so it, it's one of those things where again that connection piece is so important i think a lot of people miss that when they're working on yeah. their their talks or their speeches or their branding or their marketing yeah yeah and and that's why it's so important to put things like your the causes you care about right or um your convictions or your values out there, because those are opportunities to connect more deeply with someone. And I read a stat, uh, actually, the study came out a couple of years ago, but it said three quarters of Americans are actually more likely to trust someone with an established personal brand. 
And that same percentage is more likely to buy a service or a product from a personal brand that they know. And that applies to big companies too, right? When you have a sense of what that company or the founder of that company stands for, just like you were saying about supporting um, certain restaurants, right? Because they're local versus the chain. But we also do that when we're thinking about like major purchases. If we know that a company is supporting, I don't know, say a local shelter or whatever else it might be, right? We're more likely to support them. So, um, you know, again, the more the more we can help people connect with us and just really truly show up as ourselves, I think the more likely we also are to grow our businesses, you know, and, and convert people, as I like to say, from browsers to buyers. You bring up a good point. And I think, again, it's something that just came to me right now. When we start thinking about what we value and what we find important, like the restaurant analogy, or you yes. gave a great example of, you know, supporting a local small charity versus mm -hmm. a large national mm -hmm. or international one. Again, nothing wrong with any of yes. them, but it, it, it connect to that and you go, okay, why is that important to me? Okay. Now what would be important to my potential customers, clients, friends, what, what would be important to them? What can I do mm -hmm. to help create that type of environment where people recognize that and feel that where mm -hmm. they feel again going back to what i said earlier it's more of a connection instead of just a transaction and yeah. those are the things i think that uh, really helps people stand out so thank you for sharing that component because that that really that struck a chord with me i mean our entire conversation has but for some reason that one clicked for me a r big time because now is something that i am going to go back and think about you know, again, the work that I'm doing, it's like, what, how is this benefiting people? Right. You know, it's, yeah. what, is there something here? Am I doing it for an ego stroke or am I doing it for, to provide benefit and value to somebody where it can help them yeah. uh, get to where they want to go? Right. And one more thing about that too, the, the values and, and sharing more and expressing more, I think it needs to really come from, from the core, from a real true place. It's great to think about what's important to your customers, especially if you're a local business, right? You you really want local to um, survive and thrive in every industry. And, and that I think a lot of companies have been suffering since 2020. But back to the piece of, um, of thinking about aligning with others around those values, I think it's okay to be polarizing. Meaning, I'll give you a specific example. We're working with a, with a client who is very convicted about certain things going on um, in the world, you know, around COVID, around rights, around medical rights, around schools, school districts, what's going on in, in those places. But she also has a part of her personal brand where she's a holistic business person, right? Talks a lot about gut health and, um, you know, certain other things in that arena. And we were talking about how much of those two pieces, right? Do we make visible, right? You've got these real strong beliefs here that can be very polarizing for some, but you're also this incredible uh, business person with great experience and building up these, these health and lifestyle brands. So, you know, what, what we deducted is like, it's okay. It's to and this is what I would have advised her, but I was so glad she was comfortable doing this is it, you have to put it out there because they're both parts of you and they're such an integral part of that person that you want to attract those business clients that are okay with these strong polarizing beliefs here. And the fact is her audience is going to be a lot easier to market to and way more niche because of her strong feelings and, and values around certain topics, right? That are polarizing today. They're, it's not going to make her lose clients it, it's actually, she's going to lose the wrong, the right clients, right? She's only going to be working with the right people that she can totally help and fully show up as herself with and help them grow in other ways too. So I just wanted to share that because I think it's very important. You know, I think a lot of times in today's world, especially the last years as things have evolved, is like we're self-censoring a lot because we don't want to make waves. And I'm not ever saying make waves for wave's sake. I'm just saying find ways to really put your 
values out there and your um, the causes that you're passionate about in a way that is true to who you are and really helps attract your ideal clients. I love that you said that because yeah, that's, it can be polarizing and, and yeah, there's definitely a fear where they say, okay, if I, you know, am on one side of a political fence versus another, or, you know, based on causes or beliefs or rights or uh, anything like that, that I, you know, could lose clients. And yeah. Uh, and you you put it quite well where you, you'll lose the the wrong clients or you'll lose the, the right wrong, clients or yeah. you'll lose the right I almost clients. said Excuse that me. too though yeah yeah it, but it's like they're wrong for you but they're right to lose because exactly. they're not in alignment because it's like going if you're hiding something back and let's say you are you know an ultra conservative or an ultra liberal it could be either yeah. side of the fence and you're working with a client that is you know, one of, maybe the opposite of right. your beliefs doesn't mean you can't work with them, but a lot of times you think that you're, or maybe you're acting on eggshells and you're afraid to say something or mention something because it, it can easily come up in conversations. Even if you try to say, we keep this, you know, politics mm -hmm. free, we don't, come on. It's like, it's, it's real. There's real, you know, differing opinions on a lot of things. But I like to tell people there's a lot more in common than there are differences between all of us. So focus on the commonalities and, and and we we we're good that. And then yes, we have different opinions on things, and some of them we're really passionate about. Your client, I'm sure, is quite passionate about yeah. a lot of things. Where there's some other things where you think, you know, they would be really passionate and they're like, mm -hmm. meh, you know, right. I'm good. I'm <laughs> good with e I'm good with either. And it, but again, that goes back to what we've talked about is mm -hmm. it's hard in the pun here, but it's wearing a mask. You, mm -hmm. you want to be you. People can read if you're being genuine or they can read if you were putting on a facade or a so mask yeah. on something. And you don't want to do that because if you're putting that on and they read that, they're like, oh, they're hiding something. All of a sudden, that element of doubt comes in like, okay, they're hiding this. What else would they be hiding? Mm -hmm. Now, that could go for relationships or that could be going through, you know, work right. type of relationships, you know, customer client type situation. So be yourself. But it, and I love the way that you put it too is if you have a belief on whatever mm -hmm. issue it happens to be, and that is in the wheelhouse of the work that you do, like gut health or. Yes anti-vax versus vaccines or anti-medication versus holistic care what mm -hmm. share that but share it in a way with compassion and love and understanding exactly. instead of saying i'm right you're wrong well yeah. who's right and who's wrong and, and who determines who's right or who's wrong exactly it, it, it could vary you know there used to be ads of physicians that were promoting the benefits of smoking mm. yeah Good luck getting that ad out now. Uh, it's not going to happen. <laughs> right. It's, the things change. Information changes. Um, we revolve, or some people say mm. we regress too. It's like, mm. well, you know, it's this human thing is not easy. Uh, yeah. We're still trying to figure it out. I don't think we ever will, but that's part of the challenge of life. It, exactly. it, gives, it gives us some creativity and opportunity to be fun. But I think it boils down to, and what we've talked about a lot this morning is just I think the more you can be you, I think mm -hmm. the better you're going to be because then you don't have to pretend. Yeah. You just, you, you show up every day being you. Yeah. And it, that goes a long way and it comes through in your messaging, your branding, everything that you do. Yeah. Yeah. And I think what happens, Michael, to people over time is they kind of lose who they really are. Right. It's like we're in different work environments or different relationships and, Bef you know, after many years or months, you're kind of going along with whatever, whatever the thing is. And you kind of lose track of, of what really makes you tick and what is really driving you. And I love to just share with people, take some time every now and then like have a coffee date with yourself and really just kind of set your own GPS and figure out, you know, where do you want to be in, in five years? And how are you going to get there? And that's not just like numbers driven goals, but it's really like, take a look at the people you're surrounding yourself with. Take a look at the environments that you're in. 
where do you want to make changes? And I, I think the more proactive and and thoughtful and intentional we could be about the life that we're living, the easier it is for us to build our personal brand because we're just taking a little time every now and again, reconnect with who we truly are, you know? It's an exercise that I do at least a couple of times a year. Oh, that's uh, great. And it's- uh, That's rare, by the way. Yeah, I know. That's I've, I found that out there. <laughs> I was like, what do you mean you haven't done that? And mm -hmm. it's literally- uh, you know, and Ram Tran, uh, advisor, leadership, individual, served on presidential commissions. I saw him speak at a conference several years ago, mm -hmm. and it's an exercise that he does. Really? He does it, but he does a deep dive at least twice a year. Where he, his theme of what he does is first he starts off. He's like, okay, I'm going to list all the things that I'm doing mm -hmm. right now, and I'm going to decide what I am no longer going to do. And he just like chops it off. It might be something successful so it'd be right. we'll we'll be wild here and we'll say okay you know in december i decide i'm shutting the podcast down right. no i'm not mm -hmm. but that would be the extreme of it but there's some things like okay i'm not going to do that anymore i'm going to focus on this and a lot of it has to do and this is something that i know a lot of people have a really hard time with is that looking within mm -hmm. and they start beating themselves up i should have done that they start shooting all over yeah. themselves yep Stop that, people, please. Approach it. And this is something I learned years ago. And I it, originally did it when I was a kid. And then mm -hmm. when you lose it as an adult, but approach things with childlike curiosity. Mm -hmm. you know? And and I wonder why. What do I want to do? What would I like to do? There's mm -hmm. something that I've been wanting to do that I've been putting off for a long time. Why don't we let's schedule that? Let's start focusing on that. Is there something I want to do differently? Um, what, what am I feeling when I, and this is something, once you get better in tune with yourself, you, you write down, okay, I'm going to work on this in Q1 of 2025. Mm -hmm. Sit with it for a minute. It's like, okay, how am I feeling mm -hmm. with thinking about that? Do I feel excited? Do I feel, ooh, do I feel, what do you, you know, what, <laughs> right. what What's do you up? feel? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cause if you feel, oof, there's a good chance you're going to postpone that or procrastinate or just simply not do it and then right. you, that's when you need to dig in and go why don't i want to do this mm -hmm. and it just might not be in alignment it might be something that well i saw this on a social media post or somebody right. said that i need to do this and gary v's doing this nothing mm -hmm. against gary he's a great dude he's been very successful it's like what works for gary may not work for you right. so figure out what works for you and when you do that and you get more in tune with what works for you and what mm -hmm. lightens you up and gives you the excitement to come in uh, to work, whether you go somewhere or you walk into a different room in your condo, whatever, uh, it's it, find those things. But check in with yourself and list all exactly. the things you're going to do. How do they make you feel? And if there's something that's like, eh, you know, dig in deeper and figure mm -hmm. out, okay, why am I you know, dealing with that? It could be could be a past trauma it could be a variety of different mm -hmm. things i don't mm -hmm. know but sit with it and figure it out and then you'll realize okay this is a hurdle and if you i tell you what and from personal experience when you get over those hurdles mm -hmm. that were a, a big block for you for a long time and you get over it and now you thrive in that arena i tell you what it is it's an amazing feeling and i yeah. really encourage people to do that yeah, absolutely. I couldn't agree more. And I love that you take the time to do exercises like that. Yeah, it's important. I highly encourage and people can send me a note and ask for, and it's not really a framework, but it is kind of a framework. I'm more than happy to share, you know, how I go about it and what I do. And mm -hmm. I'll probably should just write an article about that and put a, a totally. info sheet on there and say, yeah. here, you go get it free, you know, you know, give me your email address. I, I promise I won't spam you. Um, right. It's like, a, and there's a link there. It says unsubscribe. If you don't like it, just click that. I do it. <laughs> I do it all the time. Don't tell people. Um, but anyway, Rachel, I've loved this conversation. I could talk to you for hours on this. So where can people find you and all this amazing work you're doing? Well, the best place is either um, on our website, which is thebrandid.com. We've got a form on there on the contact page that comes right to me and a couple of my teammates. And I'm also pretty active on Facebook and LinkedIn, just under my first and last name, Rachel Gogos. Um, and we also, uh, back to the soul searching piece, actually, we've got a personal brand guide 
that outlines our framework for your audience if they want to take a little time with themselves, have a coffee besides your amazing methodology, which I'm sure will will be great when you share it. Um, they're welcome to also use this tool. It can also help them professionally in how to position themselves too. Definitely. And I'll have a link to that in the show notes. So Rachel, Perfect. thank you for being you. Thank you for your time today. Really appreciate all the stuff you're doing and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you so much.